Born in the great era of Enlightenment revolutions, will the French live up to their best or launch another round of terrors? Playing as the French, we have come roaring into the industrial era with the goals in this era of securing land in the new world that has been recently discovered, making sure that we get a steady supply of gunpowder for our advanced units and also advancing our science production to be able to shore up our technological shortcomings to actually be able to get into the industrial era technologies. One of the reasons that we are picking the French a scientific focused civilization. We will see how well we are able to accomplish those goals in this era. As the French, we have these brand new exhibition halls, giving us science per population, and then a bunch of influence, depending on other factors, and also increasing the science production on research quarters. We're gonna want to get these up in as many locations as possible. And because we're brand new, this is our first city in the new world. We had an excellent comment here that we we're gonna rename this Teddy Town, playing off of our uh, patron Let's Play, which was called Teddy Town for lack of other inspiration, but also being a colony in the new world is the theming of the other game. So uh, we're going to latch onto that and also going to start founding these exhibition halls. Now, as the, the settlement here in the new world, we probably also want to make sure that we're getting enough food to our people here to keep on growing the population rather than um, immediately rushing into science production. Doesn't have to do that right away. We can wait till we get a bit of a population um, foundation here in Teddy Town. May it be more prosperous than uh, and more stable than my patron towns ever were. Who are these these horsemen that are like running away from us? Who is still employing horsemen? I suppose we are pretty far ahead of everybody else. We've hit, even though that we are behind the technology of the era, we are ahead of the technology of our competitors. Oh, and we have found it. The first sighting of Salt Peter that again denied to us. So, wait, wait, no, nope. that is coal. Hmm. I wonder if Salt Peter could potentially be down on that island. That'll be the next spot we need to explore we were missing saltpeter right here gone over to our opponents and we missed saltpeter there in the new world a near thing for us to be able to have our gunpowder units though hopefully we will still find a way to secure them that doesn't involve trade can we trade with like green over here the salts no they're in the medieval era they're gonna have no idea what to do with gunpowder for a long time yet all right well we're on our own then Ah, Petty! Founded in the New World by our settler, which we created over here, which means this city has all of the modern advancements already unlocked. So it is doing quite well already. We're going to give it its exhibition hall here, uh, which can potentially become a science hub for the brand new city. We want to be able to attach this island to it, and then we'll see if we're able to attach anything else. I don't know. Oh, we have upgrades for the pikemen now? Oh, they can become halberdiers. Well, that's a cheap upgrade, so we'll nab that. But the big one is still denied to us. An era of grand commerce is upon the empire. Trade routes riddle the land with wares fashioned in one quarter, destined for markets in another. Yet, it is not only overland that goods find customers. Now merchant companies cross entire oceans to link markets and make handsome prom profits. How do you wish to respond to their growing power? Do we accept our overseas interests? Do we nationalize them or do we tax them? Now these... They don't say that they're going to cause additional chains of decisions. It seems like it will only be shifting us on ideological axes. Is there a specific shift that we want to go? We're already farther on the uh, nationalized side. We will nationalize them. These riches deserve to be shared and controlled in the interests of all. We'll pick up whatever we can out of science that is just a single turn to research, and then we're going to look ahead to what we can potentially take here. Um, we would like to get 
I mean, flintlocks, these guys still require salt beater, they actually require double. Movable typeface will give us access to a lot of scientific advancements. I think that that is where we are going to go, though. Hmm, additional city cap here out of supply lines. That would be exciting, though I don't think we're going to be picking up... If we pick up an extra city, we're definitely going to grab that, but the only way that we would do so now is out of a war, because the area in the New World got snatched up extremely quickly. Oh, what ho, there's more empty land over here. This has to be just like a little island, right? And who are these guys? Just uh, Embark Scouts? Eh, we'll stay away from trouble for now. We still want to figure out what is going on over here and why these guys with their capital so close by have not been able to grab it. I don't know if we're going to be able to rush our units across, if we find something desirable or not. Honestly, these scouts could take it right before our eyes, which would be heartbreaking, but uh, could nevertheless happen. Hmm. I don't like black very much. Black is our closest competition. We are pulling ahead of them, definitely, in terms of score, but they have managed to score this by still being an era behind us, so um, I'm trying to evaluate how close that really places us. And I think that is going to give them an advantage once we kind of even out in the later eras. So if we can harass them however much as possible, we will. We certainly will. Irreligion. We can embrace secularism or state atheism. So we lose the ability to enforce a state religion. We cannot build new holy sites or pick tenants. We become immune to religious grievances. Or, minus 75% forest religion strength bonus, plus 25% faith on territories if territories follow the state religion. Replace the current state religion with atheism, lose the ability to build holy sites or pick tenants. Um, all religious civics are locked, and some invested influence is reimbursed if we pick atheism. Honestly, I like our religion. We have, we have fully embraced our religion here, and we are dominating our entire continent with our religion, so I see no reason to try and give it up. And especially with new places being constructed in the new world, maybe getting a, um, a holy site over here could potentially be a good idea. I know that holy sites are available. Let's grab one and see if we can set it up. Hmm, I gave Memphis quite the queue of different things, but because holy sites are actually shared projects, we can choose to whack down the holy site down here and just, you know, queue it up to be uh, be in the, in the front of the line. It'll only take four turns. We also definitely want to get Machu Picchu. Yeah, we want to get Machu Picchu pretty bad, and then we want that out of our biggest food producer. Time to figure out what that is, because it is only going to show us the surplus food here in the corner. The trick with Machu Picchu is that it's going to give all of our cities 50% of the food produced in the city where it is built. So, time to figure out where that's going to be. I think it's going to be Memphis, but it might not be. Oh, this is so cool. It actually, Machu Picchu has to be placed on a mountain tile. Brilliant. And Memphis, too, no one's surprised is producing far and away the most food in our empire. So we are going to lock up Machu Picchu over here and as other cities become available to help work on this project, um, we will sling them on over. Colonization. What model should we employ for our cities on foreign shores? So we can do vassal colonies, apply status subservient on captured cities. Interesting, interesting. Or naturalized colonies, apply status harmonious on captured cities. So cities that we capture can either produce more money and industry for 10 turns after being captured, or they can have additional stability. I think I'm going to go with the additional stability because the AI, whenever you um, take that over, seems to be a bit more humanitarian. whenever you Those take over their cities, they're usually very poorly managed ones. and will lead to crises of small, stability for a long time. Really? So getting that extra boost, now, I think is going to help us out. Disseminate. Hmm, we have found a new independent people over here. 
In the new world, some of the new world and natives, we have an extra city spot, so we could rush to become a uh, patron over here. I think we're going to go for it. We are definitely behind on the race to be able to nab them, but it would give us a city kind of behind our enemy's lines. It looks like, who is this? The Aztecs? The Aztecs have done very well in the New World. Coming from over here where their capital is. Only seven population, so it's nothing. It's completely overshadowed by black. But that hasn't given them the advantage on the scoreboard, at least not just yet. We have to choose with our artistic expression. Do we want to be making influence on market quarters? So pairing influence with money or pairing influence with maker quarters, influence with production. Well, we have way more maker quarters than we do market quarters right now. If I think that we are going to, to go in this direction truth, you can't gag and see how that it. helps us out. There's a couple other techs we can nab for just one turn. So we'll grab those. Bringing us out... <laughs> I've, we will have discovered everything from the medieval era, and it is about time to. We're going to go for the steam engine here. Basically, we're going to bypass building units with uh, saltpeter. We're going to go straight into the, the higher level tiers that do not require it's such a resource. The resource that we have never been able to find. Yes, Machu Picchu has been completed here in Memphis, so now our food production in all of these other locations should be incredible. Let's see, does it show right now a bonus from Machu Picchu? Right now the food bonus is not showing up, but we're going to pass the turn and see if that manages to update. There is a archaic army equal to our archaic army as well over here, so we're going to island hop to be able to get to them. Take out that sanctuary so that it doesn't bother us later on okay i'm not sure if machu picchu is actually doing anything for us so we have we have memphis here right and memphis's food production is at 432 so machu picchu is supposed to be giving all my other cities 50 percent of 432 so an extra 200 food and if we go over here to coast guard their food production is down at 182. Now, maybe if the food is then split between all cities. So basically the, um, the Memphis food, the 200 food is being split out. But even then, I, I'm only seeing 12 food from Empire bonus, 10 from Civic, 2 from Narrative. It is difficult to pin down where that food is going and if Machu Picchu is... Uh, actually providing any benefit whatsoever. Very unfortunate. I was hoping that that was going to be a big boon to our empire that has a bunch of cities here. Incredible, this battle on the island. <laughs> we can all both only deploy a single unit because there's no other space. The, the battlefield does not allow it for our deployment, so this is going to be abysmal. Hopefully... I mean, hopefully the elephant comes out first, right? Or I guess the halberdiers. Ah, this is good, this is good. Halberdiers versus crossbow. So we win this. We win this easily. And now they're gonna spawn a new unit. Oh, nope. That's the battle. So now we just keep fighting this until, uh, until we kill them all. were declared by the Hodenosuni? The Hodenosuni have war support of 86 to your 50. It is time for war against black. Okay, what, what tipped them off? Is there a way to be able to see? I guess they advanced to the early modern era. They picked the Hodenosuni and they're probably a warlike civ that I'm just not very familiar with. Ah, their demands are just that we pay them 4,000. Yeah, we're not going to do that. 
It's time for war. Thankfully, we already have an army here in Teddy Town ready to assault on their holdings in the New World here. I think this does call for researching line formation, this war. This will allow us to upgrade our crossbowmen all the way up to line infantry, which is skipping two progressions of unit upgrades to be able to bring them up to this um, effectively Civil War era military unit or Napoleonic War. Um, and then the cuirassiers here, heavy cav with heavier charge, also able to bypass needing to use saltpeter or any form of gunpowder they have, resources that we all already obtained. So we're going to go for line formation and then that's going to take us through researching Ooh, supply lines, flintlock, carbine, and then line formation. Okay, so it's going to take it's going to take a hot minute. But once we have it, we will have military dominance for sure. Until then, the crossbowmen will just have to do. Hmm, their navy is over here. I don't like that. We'll have to get our navy around, but unfortunately, our navy is actually falling out of favor without the ability to use gunpowder. And these guys are stranded on the island, still fighting barbarians. So what happened was the other barbarians had reinforcements that they put onto boats and then sailed around and were then able to deploy extra units. Uh, so I could embark the halberdiers here, which I think I might. Because if I embark them, then I can deploy the reinforcement here. Oh, but I have to wait a turn to deploy it. Okay, and then this guy's just able to free attack me. Not able to do very much damage, though. There we go. Fresh halberdiers be able to take out their knights. Honestly, maybe I should leave them in the water to fight these guys, because I think the great swordsman do okay against Palpatiers. And our ships are clearly better. They have decided to send the peasants out against us from this town. Am I just underestimating what peasants are able to do? I'm considered the defender. Let's, let's take this fight. Let's see how many of these peasants we can take out. I guess their idea is that should they go down, this town will have no population um, to give to my sieve to be able to help us out. Well, turns out even our <laughs> crossbowmen, though they are several years, several models out of date in terms of tech, still able to handle the peasants pretty well. So uh, we'll just defend here, let them weaken themselves and use our crossbowmen to maximum effect. Our crossbowmen can basically sink their ships as well. This is amazing. Devastating their army. Sir, how did you lose the entire navy? Well, we got into a fight with a couple crossbowmen and halberdiers on the land. Why ever did you choose to engage them? Hey, we have access to the train station. A real difference maker here in the industrial era. So we can build different train. We can build train stations in any any city, and it will allow instant movement between train stations for a single movement point cost on a unit. It also provides additional industry per adjacent makers' quarters. So it's giving us industry on top of that amazing ability to just transport troops from one end of the continent to the other. It is going to take a hit on the stability, and it's going to start adding pollution, which is a new mechanic here in the more modern eras. And 
Uh, we do have forests here, which is able to then decrease pollution. You can plant forests to help combat pollution. That'll be more of an issue as we have an extended stay in the modern era. Right now, we're not too worried about that. Now we're getting to some really interesting modern wonders that we can pick up. Uh, as the French, I feel like we kind of have to build the Eiffel Tower now for, in terms of like focusing on science, which we said was one of our goals. Big Ben would make more sense. Um, it's giving us plus 10% science per alliance on empire, science on cities, and science on capital if empire is, if empire being in an alliance. Not quite the correct grammar and also not quite the situation we are in because we don't really have um, any formal alliances with other nations. So Big Ben is not going to be helping us too much. Statue of Liberty helps us if we have a really strong culture, which we don't necessarily. That's based on how much influence we are producing. And then these other ones we passed up previously to be able to pick up. Actually, did we even look at these before? Or did we go all the way back to pick up... Where was Machu Picchu? Hmm. Yeah, we grabbed Machu Picchu. Anyway, I think we're going to pick up Eiffel Tower. It's giving us extra production, extra industry per population on all cities. Excellent for us having a lot of population spread across all of our cities. And we have just snagged this city, which I guess in our siege of the city, we inexplicably became the defenders, maybe because they had such a larger force in terms of numbers against us? I am not sure. And it's not the best city, but we'll take it, just for the war score. Okay, Memphis has a lot of improvements that it needs to build because it's been so focused on <laughs> uh, doing extra territories, but it has gotten us all the way up to 600 science coming out of Memphis alone. I wish that we had like a full breakdown of where we compared against the other empires in terms of all of the different game metrics rather than just fame, but right now we don't have that feature. And we have just gone to war with the Poles. They wanted us to give over one of our New World holdings. They have staked their claim on the entire New World. They have just come into the early modern era. These guys used to be the Aztecs. They are in third place currently. There's the war declared by the Poles. Oh, my, my, my. Well, this uh, New World garrison, their job just got a lot harder. Thankfully, we have line infantry coming in just two turns, and that should allow them to be able to blow away anything that the Poles possibly have. I also believe that the Poles' unique military unit is going to be a cavalry unit, and the Helbadiers should be able to fare very well against that. We might even be able to take our first, our first instance of Saltpeter if we play our cards right. So let's venture into enemy territory and see what we find. I am pretty unafraid. We would like to add a few more units to this army. But we also want to be ready to make it back to defend Paris if the enemies come around here. We just need more vision overall, really. New independent people. And who are they? Time will tell if they are helpful, hopeless, or history. Inconvenient Truths 1. Hint, hint, this could be an ongoing thing. There has been an unsettling turbulence to the weather in recent years. The seasons seem less reliable than they once did. Though scorned by many of their peers, several preeminent scientists argue that the emissions of increasing industrialization are causing the planet's temperatures to rise and in turn it climates to grow less predictable. They claim the disruption will grow far more severe if rapid action is not taken. So we can investigate giving us additional science at the cost of money. I like that. We can act, giving us a bunch of science right now, but costing us 25 industry for 10 turns on all of our cities, or we can dismiss it to be able to get a uh, industry boost on all cities. Let us investigate. 
giving us that trickle at the cost of money. I'm okay with that. Line formation has been researched. All right. Time to build an army to sail across and wipe out the Hodnosone. Albadiers, upgrade to line infantry. Line infantry replace everything. Crossbowmen, upgrade to line infantry. So this army has two elephants and two line infantry with four slots that can be added. So There's going to be two more line infantry and then two of our new heavy cav. The, uh, the Curiousiers? What are they called? Curiousiers, yes. Of course, I know from my Age of Empires days. Ooh, it takes forever to build these. Either that or Heartland's per industry is just terrible. Okay. Maybe, maybe Heartland, maybe you don't build this whole army. It'll take them nine turns to be able to turn out one line infantry. Producing modern armies is extremely expensive here. Incredibly expensive. Okay, but everybody's gonna have to do their part, so go ahead. Queue up one. We'll see where we can get the rest. Okay, Inconvenient Truths 2. After a long and careful study, your scientists present the results of their studies into the effects of an ever hotter Earth. Their findings make for a bleak reading. Flash fires and coastal flooding will ravage countless communities in the decades to come. There is a window of opportunity in which to prevent this, though the cost of change will be high should we act while we still can. So we can go to change or stasis. Either lose money and we get overproductive, or um, we just gain prosperous. And stasis will have a chance of triggering another narrative event. It's only minus 400. That doesn't feel very high. I wonder if this chain of um, events is going to keep on rolling. We want to be able to get our fleet involved to be able to support the New World garrison here. Um, once we secure some saltpeter, we can finally upgrade these guys. Right now, not very effective units. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's belittling my own navy, but it is true at the same time, so. Man, Coast Guard's production is not any better. Line infantry still extremely expensive, but we're going to go for it. And then High Point, you need to join in as well. Get me 20 turns and 3 population for a unit of Curiousiers. Well... This one army had better be strong enough to whip anything that Black has over that side. If they get caught in the in the crossing and just like destroyed at sea, I'm going to be so so mad. Maybe we need to be able to um, build a harbor over here and a, uh, a navy on this side. We have a good location here to be able to found a new city. We could then absorb this city when in the event that we end up winning the war um i'm not sure i want to commit to it just yet so i do want to upgrade these crossbowmen into my line infantry we're gonna need to be able to make a lot more money here if we're gonna maintain a modern army Alright, time to test what the line infantry is able to do. Fire into the great swordsmen. This is great swordsmen who are both defending and they are behind walls, and we still drop them to half. Really solid stuff here. The enemy's gonna get reinforcements out on this side. I think I still want to swing around to be able to lend support. Oh, we can wipe out the crossbowmen. Well, we'll take that. My ships here, I don't think they have the range to be able to really do uh, anything, honestly. Oh, 
Oh, my boat just can't attack land targets. Okay, so my navy is, is truly useless here. Time to make friends with the free city over here. Make sure that they are guarding their flank and then we can push into the rest of the Poles settlements over here with our brand new army. The line infantry, turns out they do very well for themselves. Very well indeed, though. I mean, they're costing me. <laughs> they're costing me so much. Time to march across the Great Plains here. And bring the siege to the Poles. They keep on thinking that these peasants actually matter. They do not. They do not matter. I must say, I am impressed. They eliminated one of my units of line infantry. I did not think they were going to do that. At the same time, it cost them every single unit they had in a single turn. <laughs> and brought us into the modern era. Oh my gosh, we are advancing so incredibly quickly here through the different eras. We, this is it. When we advance into the the contemporary era here, because that's what's next, is we hit what's called contemporary. And now we're just gonna stay there for the rest of the game. We're at turn 179, so we'll be taking over at turn 180. That will give us basically half the game to play in the contemporary era. Things have just been flying by. The industrial era has kept us at the very top of the scoreboard. We have been able to hit a lot of key research points. Our cities are expanding and kind of hitting the limits on what uh, our food production can support in terms of population because Machu Picchu ended up being a huge disappointment in terms of how much food it was doling out compared to what I expected it was going to be able to do for us. Maybe I was just expecting too much and it really means something different. I'm going to have to do some research on what is really going on there? Also, our war with Black has completely stalled out yeah, now. Assuming. Their war support has been dwindling this entire time because we have occupied their single holding in the New World. And because they were the instigators in the war, they're continually losing support because they have not been able to gain any ground whatsoever. And we're just kind of holding, holding the line, holding steady. Uh, we're, we've been trying to build an army to go sail across and attack them, but... The production costs and gold upkeep costs of the modern units exorbitantly high, so we still have not even been able to get across to attack them. We've made more gains against the Poles here in the New World, so hopefully we're going to be looking at a whole continent here that is all ours. And it's also going to be dominated by our culture, which it looks like it kind of already is, and dominated by our religion, which again, it kind of already is. So things are definitely looking up. All the cars are coming up towards the French. Let's see who we are going to grab into the next era. Moving into the contemporary era, if the industrial era units are anything to go by, to be able to maintain the kind of military that I want, we're going to need a ton of production and also a ton of money. We've kind of neglected making money this entire time. So that looks uh, has us looking at the Chinese and the Australians as the options that we could pick up. The Chinese here for the money focus. Silk Railroad would be fantastic, plus 10% money on all cities is a great boon. Um, for the contemporary era here, Congress giving us seven money per number of attached territories. Not as useful to us because we have so many just tiny cities dotting all over. Not a lot of extra attached territories, though this would allow us to work in, um, put very large populations to work. So th the Chinese are definitely an option, but I'm mostly looking at just this raw 10% money. The competitors, the Australians, Dream Weavers, plus 20% industry on all cities. Well, 20% is better than 10%, and industry, also incredibly important here. We get Strip Mining Complex, plus 10 industry. It is going to feed in pollution. I don't know the balancing of pollution, how impactful that is going to be, like how much we have to do to counteract that, or how necessary it is for us to counteract that. I feel like because we're getting into the era so early in terms of the overall game length, we're going to have to do stuff to be able to combat pollution. Otherwise, we're going to have wastelands for cities at the end of this. But look at this. Plus 50% industry per adjacent strategic resource deposit. 
That is so big for being able to just amp up our cities to be able to produce all of these modern improvements and modern military features. I'm liking going for the Australians here. So we're going to lock them in, throw you guys over to what is going to be our uh, final age up graphic. And then the next episode, very excited to see how the modern era is going to go. Unless it l drags on incredibly long with a lot of really interesting stuff happen, I'm going to try and still keep it in a single episode. So looking forward to seeing you guys in that next episode. The human mind. Creative, imaginative, and ingenious at turning every single human invention to its most violent end. We pray, or hope, looking forward to a future which, with luck, will be counted in millennia, not in months.